for our worship today will follow the order of service that's been printed out and distributed to you. And maybe this one note, uh, my wife noticed in the service folder that it says the Sunday morning Bible study will resume next week. But Pastor Louie sent me information for a Bible study this morning. Yeah. It's only what we were going to cover and, or where we should start. And so we will have Bible study, okay? And if I wasn't supposed to have Bible study with you, you can skip next week then. And, but anyway, we will have Bible study after our worship this morning. We begin our worship this morning by singing the first three verses of hymn number 483 in our blue hymnal. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with the innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We join the same verse four of holy, 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 Lord God Almighty has printed for us.
from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord, the Lord have mercy. for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord, the Lord have mercy. for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, the Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you call and appoint us to proclaim the good news of your Son despite our sins and weaknesses. Purify us by your grace. Remove our uncertainties and work through us to fill the nets of your kingdom with those lost in the darkness of death. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, the first eight verses. This will also be our sermon text this morning. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now speak responsibly the psalm. Uh, the congregation will sing the verses in bold print. I will read the other verses, and together we will read the refrain. And we begin with the refrain. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be gracious to us and bless us. So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity, and the nations of the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will appear. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Our second reading is written in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 12 through 17. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We join this in the two verses of hymn number 638 as printed. Chapter 5, the first 11 verses. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell to Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Please be seated. <clears throat> We're going to sing hymn number 745 in our hymnal, Heart the Place of Jesus Christ. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our meditation this morning is the first lesson for today as it was written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, the first eight verses. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior from sin, your fellow redeemed. The vision that God sent to Isaiah when he called Isaiah to be his prophet to proclaim his word was certainly something that Isaiah did not expect. At the same time, it was something that he had never experienced before. Try to put yourself into his shoes. He receives a vision of God himself, the King of kings and Lord of lords, seated high and exalted on his throne in heaven. And the glory of, of God on his throne 
as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was seen by Isaiah in the train of the king's robe that, that filled the entire temple where he was seated. Not only that, but the king was attended by his angels, seraphim. Isaiah describes what he saw when he looked at the seraphim. They had six wings, he says. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. But more than that, they offered up a hymn of praise to the one true God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And Isaiah, well, he reacts the way any of us would have reacted. The same way in which the Apostle Peter reacted there on the Sea of Galilee with Jesus in his boat. And not just Jesus, but two boats full of fish as well. It was all almost breathtaking, almost overwhelming for Isaiah. And it's good for us to listen to, to this part of God's word as our God talks to us about his own glory and the truth that the whole earth indeed the entire universe is full of God's glory. And our God is glorious for two reasons primarily. First, he forgives sinners. And second, he commissions sinners to be his witnesses. May the Holy Spirit Guide and bless our study of God's word this morning. The vision that God gave to Isaiah must have been almost overwhelming. <clears throat> it must have almost brought Isaiah to silence, in awe. Just try to imagine to see God himself seated on his throne in heaven, the one true God, the only true and ever living God. And with your own eyes, you see him. You see the angels that also are there with God in his presence always and always serving him. And you hear their song of praise to the one true God. Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth, they say, is full of his glory. And what was Isaiah's reaction? He said, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Woe is me, I'm ruined. And Isaiah knew why, because I'm a sinner and I've seen the Holy God, the Lord Almighty. That's exactly the same reaction that Peter had, wasn't it? There on the Sea of Galilee, in the boat with Jesus after they caught that catch of fish that was so large that the nets began to tear and rip. So large that Peter had to motion to his partners in the other boat, come, come, come quick. And when they both started to pull the net into both boats, the number of fish was so, so overwhelming that but both boats began to sink. And how did Peter react? You know. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Get away from me, Lord. 
because I'm a sinner. And you, Jesus of Nazareth, you obviously are not a sinner. You obviously are exactly who you've been telling everybody you are, the Son of God himself. Both Isaiah and Peter, separated by more than 700 years, had exactly the same reaction. And our reaction here this morning is the same as theirs, isn't it? To be sure, we're not receiving the vision of, of God as we sit here in, in this, this facility, your church. But we have come into God's presence, haven't we? And he is here through his word and sacraments. We see his glory, don't we? But we listen to his word. And we know it's the truth through the Holy Spirit's work in us. We believe it's the truth. And our initial reaction is, exactly what Isaiah's was, and Peter's too. What was me? Because I'm a sinner. If we react in any other way, the Word of God says we're not being truthful with ourselves. We read that part from 1 John, didn't we? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. In other words, John's saying we're just lying to ourselves and perhaps lying to everybody else as well, and even to God, if we say we're not sinners. If we're honest, we will admit I have sinned and I continue to sin every day that I live here on this earth. But God's glory is seen in that he forgives sinners. He forgave Isaiah, didn't he? Isaiah says that one of the seraphim flew to the altar and with tongs picked one of the hot coals off the altar and brought it to Isaiah and touched his lips with that hot coal and told him the good news, see, your guilt has been paid for. Your sins have been removed. You are now not guilty before the Holy God himself. Your sin is forgiven. That was the same good news that Jesus always proclaimed to whomever was listening to him. It's still the good news for you and me today, isn't it? And it's the best news ever. The good news that a holy God forgives our sins. And if someone asks you, well, why should he do that? You know the answer, don't you? It's God's answer from his word. It's because of Jesus. It's because of his holy life. And his innocent suffering and death on the cross. That we stand forgiven before a holy God. And through faith, the gift of the Holy Spirit in, to each of us, through faith in Jesus as our Savior, that forgiveness is ours, it's yours, it's mine. We are forgiven. Each of us can say, I have been forgiven because Jesus died for me, lived and died for me. Isaiah was forgiven, so was Peter. So are we. And that's the first and most important reason why the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lord God himself, the creator of the universe, is glorious beyond words because he forgives sinners. Think of it. He wants you and me in heaven with him forever. He wants us to enjoy all of his most wonderful blessings for all eternity in his own home. He wants me. Each of us can say. To be in heaven with him. 
It really is unthinkable, isn't it? It just, it's almost too good to be true. But it is the truth. God forgives our sins, all of them. It doesn't matter what they've been. Or how many times we've committed these sins. There is so much a part of our lives. It doesn't matter who, whom we've hurt or neglected. It doesn't matter what we've said or done that's been contrary to God's will. Every sin has been forgiven. And that way, first of all, our God reveals to us just how glorious he is. But that's not all. He's also glorious because he commissioned sinners to share this good news about a Savior named Jesus. And that's what God was doing for Isaiah, wasn't it? He was calling Isaiah to be his prophet. He needed someone to speak to the people of Israel about their sin. And in effect, God said, Isaiah, you're my man. I'm calling you to tell everybody about their sin and about my undeserved love for sinners. I'm calling you to share that good news with everybody. That's exactly what Jesus did too, isn't it? When he called Peter and 11 others to be his apostles. To tell everybody the good news that Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of God and the Savior from sin. He does the same for you and me. And through his word, he calls us, he commissions us. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them everything I have commanded you. We're his witnesses, aren't we? You and me. We know and believe the good news by God's grace and through the work of the Holy Spirit. And that in and of itself makes us witnesses. You can say, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to be a witness for Christ, but that will happen only. But I don't believe in Jesus as my Savior anymore. God forbid that would happen to you or me. God forbid that would happen to any Christian. And as long as we believe in Jesus as our Savior, we've got work to do, don't we? And what a privilege it is to tell others about a Savior named Jesus. What a privilege it is to share with them the best news ever. Good news that will result in life forever and ever at the end of their life here on this earth. That's the good news we get to share with people. What a special blessing that is. Here again, it's almost too good to be true, isn't it? I mean, it would be enough, wouldn't it, for a holy God to forgive all my sins and take me to be with him in heaven forever one day? That, that would be enough. Who could want more than that? But our God says, but there is more. There is more. While you're alive here on this earth, for however many years that is, it's going to be your privilege to share this good news with other people too. We are his spokesmen, aren't we? We represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We go with his message. We talk to people about sin their sin, and our sin too. And then we talk about a Savior who's taken away the sins of all people of all time and who promises 
eternal life in heaven to all who believe in him as their savior. It's our privilege to share that good news. That's another reason why our God is so glorious. It must have taken away Isaiah's breath. And I think really Peter is too. When they found themselves in the presence of the one true God and realized, I'm a sinner. We admit the same thing about ourselves in God's presence. But also through the work of the Holy Spirit, trust in Jesus as our Savior from sin. May the Holy Spirit who's brought us the faith in Jesus as our Savior strengthen and keep us in that faith. And encourage us to share the good news of the gospel with people all around us, all to the glory of our Savior's name. Amen. Please stand. We jointly confess our Christian faith, making use of the Nicene Creed, which is printed for us. We pray together. We confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We will now receive our offerings. And the offerings will be brought to the front of the church. Please fill out the uh, forms. The, Connection cards, if you would.
join in responsibly reading the prayer of the church as printed for us. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Grant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce fruit in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of the truth to our Lord. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom that they may promote justice and hinder evil. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those who work in dif whose work is difficult or dangerous. Even all who devote themselves to many useful tasks. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Keep us in the true faith and bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. And I'll sing in number 907, How Shall They Hear Who Have Not Heard?
stand. Bless the Lord. You have given your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We join to sing hymn number 803, day by day.
Please be seated. Welcome again this morning, and uh, the Lord's blessing so sweet. We will begin our Bible study in just a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> 